Hi, this is a video on adding symbol lists into the ETF Trading Bandit. When you first run the application, you'll see the summary screen, and at the top of the screen, there is a menu with the data area of the menu, which has a symbol list drop down. When the system is first installed, this symbol list drop down will only contain one list, and that is the list that was delivered with ETF Trading Bandit version 1 and version 2. There are no new lists that are added by default. But the capability of adding your own lists is now new for version 2. And so I'm going to go through the steps you need to uh, go through yourself in order to add a brand new list of ETFs into ETF Trading Bandit version 2. So here's what you do. The first thing you do is go to the Manage Lists button it pops open the Manage Lists dialog and from here you'll see um, the set of lists that are available in the system. Now when you first run this, as I said, you'll only see symbols.txt. It will be easier for me to explain this if I open the Windows folder that's associated with this um, symbol list. Now this is the Windows folder that keeps all of the symbol lists and they're just text files on your Windows system. So you can see it's opened it up into Edgerator. Um, here we look Edgerator, ETF Trading Bandit, Symbol Lists, and the symbol list we see here is symbols.txt. It's a simple text file. I can open this into Notepad. If I double click on this, then I've opened in Notepad, and we see that the default list is just the set of 20 uh, Connors ETFs that are talked about in the Larry Connors High Probability ETF Trading Book. And the format of the list is the symbol name of the ETF, and this is the symbol name that's used to grab the data from Yahoo. So it's important that this matches with uh, with the Yahoo definition of the name. And then there's a comma and then there's a description of what the ETF is. The, the comma and the description are not necessary. So if you just knew the ETF symbol, you could just type in the ETF symbol and you would be fine. So I could I could have on my line here, I could have um, just DIA would be fine, EEM would be fine, so I don't actually need the comma and the description. But the description will help when you view charts because the description pops up as a background to the chart and it just tells you what the um, what the ETF is. So I won't save those changes and what we'll do is we'll go through adding a new list. But to show you that the folder is in sync with the manage lists dialog and you don't by the way you don't need to come into the windows folder this is just for the case if you're a, you know a power user and you want to quickly add a lot of symbols the fastest way to do that is to come into the windows folder and just create your own symbol lists so what i would do in windows is uh, i'd you know right click in the area and i'd just say new um, and then i say new text document and you know standard windows way of creating a new document. You see new text document is added in here. But you'll also see that the Manage Lists dialog has also been updated with this new document. Um, so if I'm calling my list, uh, maybe I'll create a list of financial ETFs. So I'll say financial ETFs. This is my new watch list. And if I open this, of course, there's nothing in it. So it's my job now to go and add symbols to that list. So what I could do, there's two ways of doing that. I could either add it um, using Notepad, as you just saw here. I could just type in the, the name of the ETF. Um, for instance, um, FAS could be one, and uh, FXO could be another, and so on and so forth. And then I could just save that. And if I go to my Manage Lists dialog, remember this is the, another way of, uh, of of adding symbols to the list, but it's a slightly slower way. You can add one at a time using this method. What you would do in the Manage List dialog is just open up the Edit Symbols dialog, and now you'll see that those two symbols um, of ETFs that I just added in Notepad are appearing in um, in the Edit Symbols dialog. And if I wanted to continue adding symbols from here, then I could just click on the top row, and then I could type in some more RKH, for instance. I don't need a name, remember, so I can just press Enter here. Um, I can put in IAI, and so on and so forth. So I can create my create my list like that. Now, when I say OK here, that has been saved, and I can just close this dialog, and 
find my list now in the drop down for symbol lists. So it's financial ETFs.txt. When I select that, there's nothing in, there's no data been downloaded loaded yet because all I did was create the set of symbols. So I have to say update list data and it will go out to Yahoo, download the data for those symbols and show any signals and you can see there are no signals for these uh, for these ETFs as of 1-27-2011 which was the close of yesterday. So another way to add a new symbol list if you don't want to go into the Windows folder system and do all that kind of stuff yourself is just go to manage lists dialog and then just say new symbol list and now the symbol list will be added into the manage lists dialog if you were looking at the Windows folder, you would also see it added into the Windows folder. But remember, you don't need to do this. And now it's in here. I can go about, I can just change the name. This could be my uh, list 2. And then I can start adding symbols uh, in the same way that I was adding them before. And uh, if I knew the actual description, then I could actually type that in here too. Uh, and so on and so forth. So there we go. Uh, what will happen here then, I've got list 2, I can select, now see in my drop down I have uh, financial ETFs, list 2 and symbols, I can select list 2, update the data, and here you'll see the point about um, adding the description. In one of these I added the description, in the other one I didn't. So VFH has a description, KBE does not. Um, so if we click on VFH and we go to the chart, You'll see the description is right here, Vanguard Financials, and if I click on KBE, you'll see that there's no description here. So it's up to you whether you want that uh, description to come through on the chart or not. Uh, that's it, adding symbol lists. Um, it's a new feature in version 2, and uh, that's how to do it. Have fun with it. Thanks. Bye.